So we are focusing on uh, uh, the liabilities uh, aspect wherein the major focus I am looking at is with respect to the leases because they are also in a way related to the long term assets. We will uh, see the benefits of leases over uh, purchases and how these uh, uh, assets as well as the leasings are considered as a part of the financial statements. How are the financial statements affected because of all the changes and various mechanisms used to deal with uh, the assets like different depreciation methods or the impairments or revaluations all these uh, various things that are uh, happening on the assets as well as various leasing methods how do they impact your financial statement that is what we are trying to uh, look at in this uh, entire session so just to get uh, started into it the initial thing that we are talking of is capitalization versus expensing so any any long term purchase we are making or any purchase which we are making for the business it can go either into the PNL statement or income statement as an expense it can go into the income statement as an expense or it can go into the balance sheet as an asset so if it is going into the PNL statement as an expense we are calling that that particular uh, purchase is expensed if it is going into the balance sheet as an asset we are saying that it is capitalized and so whenever we are capitalizing it for that particular cost we are not treating it as an expense in the PNL statement so it is going as an asset in the balance sheet so from that perspective we see that the total assets of the company will grow up and uh, because uh, expenses are not existing or for that particular uh, portion which has been treated as an asset because it's the purchase value instead of being going as a <coughs> PNL statement as an expense we are taking into the balance sheet as a capitalized asset so again this is not applicable to each and every purchase we'll talk about a few of them especially long-term purchases which have a useful life of more than one year that is where these kind of situations will come into picture so the whenever i am capitalizing it the total assets will grow up the expenses will come down right and because the expenses are coming down wherever the expenses are down the net income is uh, planned to go up and that the net income is going up this net income is what will go as a retained earnings on the balance sheet into the uh, into the liabilities and owner's equity section which means the retained earnings will go up which means the overall equity will go up so these are the ups that are associated with uh, the expansion uh, the expensing part <coughs> sorry capitalizing over the expensing right because if it is capitalized the expense is decreased in that particular year which will result in net income going up retained earnings going up, going up and even the equity also going up and when we look at uh, capitalizing because it's going as a part of the asset in the cash flow statement the increase or decrease is treated as the cash flow from investment activities so there will be any purchase of an asset will go as decrease in the cash flow from investing activities but it may not impact the cash flow from operations activities at all but in case I have expensed that purchase, it would definitely result in bringing down my cash flow from operations. Again, these are very interesting things to consider. 
if we see the formula of free cash flow to the firm or equity it focuses more and more on cash flow from operations are uh, uh, and at the same time let's say if i want to evaluate the the quality of earnings of the firm there also we are looking at cash flow from operations rather than the other two areas so when i am doing an expensing i am seeing that the cash flow from operations will be down but when i am uh, doing a, a capitalization it's the cash flow from investments which is down whereas the cash flow from uh, operations may not change so this stems a lot of uh, companies to capitalize large number of purchases so that they can show they can show less in the expenses and probably show more and more net income in the initial years and more and more retained earnings and probably uh, the equity going up and at the same time their assets also can typically go up and at the same time yes when i have expensed it it's a huge expense coming in one single year but when i have capitalized it whatever the portion of capitalizing the asset i will expense it over the remaining few years whatever is the purchase when i am saying i have capitalized it i have treated it as an asset and i will depreciate it over the life of the asset so there is a uniformity in the expense every year in the form of depreciation expense whereas when i am expensing it only in the first year there is a huge expense and zero expense in the next year which means the variability of earnings is very very high when i am treating it as an expense whereas it is much lesser when i am capitalizing the asset so that's one more thing uh, that we may have to uh, look at and in this case the equity is going up if i am capitalizing it but the debt does not change so all the debt to equity ratio or debt to total asset ratio they all will come down because the debt is not changing whereas the equity and hence the total assets all of them are increasing because of capitalization so one area where we have to be comfortable with is if a company changes its uh, financial statement presentation from a capitalized version to an expensed version or vice versa i need to know what kind of impact it will create on the various elements in the financial statement and at the same time i need to know what in what way i can convert one form to the other right or also i should be able to understand what could be the motive behind this company switching from one form of presentation to the other form all these things will play an important role as an analyst uh, looking at the long term assets as well as liabilities of the company now one more aspect which we observe nowadays heavily in the financial statements is interest that is uh, accumulated during the construction of the asset so let's say we have a construction period of 3 years and an asset is worth let's say 3 3 million if i am expensing this asset because only in the fourth year the asset will become useful so one way is i expense it 3 million in first year itself or i capitalize it and for the first 3 years i don't incur any expense on it i capitalize it to the extent of 3 million and after that i depreciate it over the remaining uh, useful life of the asset so this kind of interest during capitalization period is allowed both under gap as well as ifrs so whenever i am expensing anything the expenses are much higher but when i am capitalizing something obviously the expenses are lesser 
so if the interest expense is going less it is resulting in my total times interest earned a bit by i ratio to directly go up just by changing the accounting mechanism just by changing the changing to capitalization from uh, changing to capitalization from uh, expensing part i am able to increase my coverage ratios also so that is where the analyst has to be uh, quite comfortable in terms of translating that back to expense and then evaluating or comparing the two financial statements so even from all these dimensions it becomes more and more necessary for me to come out with a mechanism of converting one form to the other so that i can evaluate which all financial statements and from there which all ratios can be impacted because of this analysis then before we get into the conversion part i would also like to look at a few more uh, areas see when we talk about the rnd cap should it be capitalized or expensed it is very clear as per us gap whatever you are incurring as a part of rnd expense rnd costs you have to expense it completely no capitalization of rnd whereas when it comes to ifrs at least you segregate between r and d you segregate the costs into research costs and uh, development costs separately until the technical feasibility being established all the costs that are incurred are research costs and once the technical feasibility is established and you are going forward to develop some kind of piloting or something like that then you can treat that cost as a development cost and what it says is the development cost if you want you can choose it to capitalize that cost over the life of the asset but the uh, the research cost definitely has to be expensed itself and one more dimension coming with respect to the asset says the intangible assets that you have generated internally sometimes we generate we develop patents we we develop and we file for patent our copyrights we generate so in these cases wherever the assets are generated internally the only cost for the company is the legal cost so we are capitalizing only the legal cost but when the same patents and copyrights are acquired through a purchase of some other company then they will be included at the acquisition cost itself whereas if it is internally generated then only the legal costs only will be capitalized because the determination of the economic life and separation of <coughs> the development cost for that particular patent or copyright is a very difficult thing so as per the law or as per the process the the uh, uh, internally generated uh, patents you only capitalize the legal costs whereas when you have acquired them you can very well capitalize the entire thing and when you talk of goodwill internally generated goodwill cannot be depreciated or amortized whereas when we are and you cannot even recognize internally generated goodwill but the goodwill that is acquired through a purchase transaction through an acquisition transaction you can very well recognize it uh, but you need not amortize or depreciate the goodwill because there is nothing called useful life associated with the goodwill there could be an impairment of the asset but there is uh, nothing uh, called depreciation that is associated with the goodwill 